Hi, I'm Stephanie Hare. I'm a papermaker and owner of Share Studios. And today we're gonna make handmade paper like a pro. The first thing you wanna do when you're making handmade paper is make sure you're setting up in a space that is watertight <laughs> or that you're not gonna completely destroy with water. You don't want to ruin your nice hardwood floors <laughs> or cause any mold issues. You gotta make sure that all of your water is contained. I've got a linoleum floor underneath me. I've got some vats to catch all of my water. I've got my main vat in front of me. It's already filled with water. It's nice clean water in there. And then I've got on my side, I've got my stack of felts. I'm going to put the paper onto this at some point. I have another one behind me. And of course I have my trusty molds. We're gonna do an A6 in the sheets and the matching envelopes. Paper making is a, is a long process. And if you wanna get it done in one day, you gotta make sure you're set up ahead of time. <laughs> So today we're gonna make some abaca paper. I'm using an unbleached abaca. This is a half stuff. It's been half processed <laughs> into these larger sheets, which I'm then going to take over to my beater and that's gonna really create our pulp. The abaca, especially the way I process it in my beater, is gonna have a little bit of shrinkage when it dries. It's gonna wanna tighten it a little bit and have those nice crinkly, rubbly, rumply edges, which is really beautiful. And it has a nice rattle, you can hear it. And it's also a nice tight knit, um, fiber for calligraphy nibs, so it's really smooth, which is why I like it. So we're gonna take this fiber, soak it, tear it up, and put it in my beater. Let's go. So this is my beater. So essentially, this is a tub. I've already filled it with water. And you can see I've got my bed plate and my roll, and I can change the distance between those two things with this here thing. The main job of the beater is really to process the half stuff that you're using into whatever kind of pulp and qualities that you're looking for. The beater is where the paper is made, they actually say, um, because this is what is going to determine the characteristics of your paper, depending on how much water, how much fiber, the different distance between the bed plate and the, the roll. Um, so when you manipulate all those different things, you can create a, a wide variety of different kinds of paper, which is really fun. When we're starting, the paper is this half stuff. So this is not the raw fiber, it's already been partially processed in these sheets. I then soak it, I've got it in my bucket here, soak it and tear it up into smaller pieces here so now it's really soft and malleable. And then it's gonna go into the beater. And so it starts as a fiber, turns into a pulp, and I'm eventually going to turn it into what's called a slurry and that's when I'll start making my paper. So we've got the beater filled up, plenty of water in there. It's time to turn her on. When you first get started, it's just gonna break down some of these smaller pieces, make it a little more, more of a mush. And then what I'm eventually going to do, once it's mostly broken down, once all of these are gone, I'm gonna lower my roll. You can hear it bumping around. These are all the big chunks. So this has been in the beater for about an hour and a half. I'm really looking to make sure most of the clumps are out, of course, and it's really about time for me. When I'm working and making paper in the other room, I'm actually listening for that sound. If it's not running properly, you can hear it. So I'll come in and tend to my beater. Um, and this looks pretty good, so I think it might be time to add some pigment. I've got everything assembled here. I'm gonna use a few different colors today. I've got my white, black, green, red, and yellow. These are all pigments that are specifically made for handmade paper, and they're gonna be combined with what's called a retention agent, which is the chemical that it's going to make all of these pigment molecules bind to the fiber. It's essentially a pigment that's suspended in water, so I wanna shake it up. So I am making a dusty green color, but it adds a lot more dynamic color range. If you add in some of these other colors, it makes kind of a, a gray. Should probably be enough. We can always adjust later on too. This is more just making a base color. Um, but you do always have to keep in mind that the pulp is going to change the color a little bit. And also the color is gonna change when the paper is dry. So what I'm gonna do first is add our retention agent. Again, this is the chemical that's gonna allow the pigment to bond to the fibers. If you don't add this additive, then you're gonna find a lot of pigment floating around and pulp and it's not gonna actually stick together. So this is always the first step. Now, you wanna make sure with pigments that you strain them. 
Otherwise, it could be little dried bits or little chunks that aren't going to incorporate into the pulp. And you're gonna find some really blotchy, gross spots when you're done, which is always a real bummer. <laughs> I'm using a very fine mesh paint strainer, actually. So next is mixing it in. out a little swatch, try to squeeze out some water, and then I'll actually put it on another, like a white piece of paper, and then I can put it on top of my heater or use my heat gun to kind of dry it out. So this color is gonna change a little bit, and once it's dry, I'll be able to evaluate whether or not I need to add more color or adjust it in any direction, but I think this is actually looking pretty good today. So the next thing we're gonna do, and the last thing we're gonna do to this pulp is add sizing. So this is an additive that helps any ink or paint to not feather into the pulp. Prepping the surface for your pens, your paint, and that kind of thing. All right, so since we have everything set up, it's time to add some pulp to our vat. This is actually called charging the vat or hogging the vat. So we're gonna add a little bit. This is actually my favorite step. It's really fun to watch the pulp go into the water so gracefully. <laughs> I'm gonna make a kind of a medium weight paper today. So I wanna make sure that there's enough pulp in my vat. So it's really about the concentration of the pulp in the water. I'm more gonna notice it as I'm pulling the sheets. So when I have the pulp on my decal there and I take the decal off, I'll be able to see how thick that pulp is. This is probably pretty good. We could pull a few sheets. So I'm gonna hog my vat, charge it up here, make sure everything is really disintegrated. All right, so this is my envelope decal. This is an A6 size. A nice magnetic closure there. All right, we're gonna go for it. Go under. So as I'm doing this, I can actually get a sense for how thick those sheets are too. I can see how much pulp is in there. And you can notice that the, the water didn't flow through that screen immediately. That's because I have beaten this to a point where it has enough of those water molecular kind of <laughs> connections that it's holding onto that water as long as it can. And it's very slowly draining, which gave me the opportunity to shimmy that pulp around, make sure it's really smooth, evenly done. After a certain point, that pulp's not gonna slide anywhere, so you can kind of pull it on to the end. It's holding onto a lot of water. I think you're gonna be surprised how much water and how thick these sheets are. And then when they're dry, they're actually gonna be quite thin. So it's, it's a fun kind of magic trick, <laughs> the way it dries. Set it aside and let it drain and focus on my other one. I'm gonna be adding uh, scoops of pulp as I go too. So I'm always gonna mix in between. They say that you can tell papermakers by their shake. Each person has a different style. The way that I decide to pull it through the pulp and shimmy it around is, could be vastly different from the way another papermaker would do it. So the next step is actually to transfer these sheets of pulp over onto my felts, which is called cooching. So I'm going to take it. Enough water has come out now, so it's not gonna slop around. I just flip it over, lay it down on my felts. It's helpful to have your felts a little damp to begin with. The water molecules want to connect to each other, so they're really gonna stay on there. But that looks good. I'm just gonna lift it up, and there we go. Felts serve as a substrate. You can play around with different felts for different textures. You can also let it dry right on the felt. That's gonna pull in that nice woven texture. So there's a lot of different ways and techniques to change the paper just by choosing different felts. As I'm working, I'm just gonna create more and more layers. I typically do around 10 felts. And what I'll do when I'm done there is put another felt on top, put another whiteboard on top, and then I'll bring it into my back room and I'll put it into my hydraulic press, which is going to really squeeze out all the water, compress that fiber into a nice tight fiber paper. So once the paper has been pressed in my hydraulic press, all of the water has been removed, or most of it, we're gonna bring it over to my dry box system. So this is actually a series of layers of cardboard, polyester felts, and window screen. And there's a fox fan in the back, which is gonna blow the air through all of these things. So that's just a series of stacking them up, putting lots of weight on top, so we wanna make sure that paper can't move at all as it's drying, because it really wants to shrink. But if you put weight on it, you're gonna be restraint drying it and keeping it nice and flat. 
So this has been in here for quite a few days, so let's unload this baby. Got my heavy abaca, I like to use my fiber, make it really work for me. We have our cardboard, our screen, and ta-da, there's the finished paper. Look at those beautiful rumples along the edge. This is one of the most satisfying parts because I'm going to be able to actually see that stack grow. These envelopes came out wonderful, a nice rumple along the edge. I'll fold one up so we can see that point where the paper actually becomes a real object, a very useful vessel <laughs> to carry your words, your drawings, your artwork. And voila. So it's super special when I know that people are sending their invitations or letters to loved ones on my handmade paper. Because obviously you can tell when it arrives in the mail, it's not your normal machine made paper. You can see the hand that made it and know that somebody spent me <laughs> all of this time and labor making this amazing piece of paper to bring a little specialness into your life. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more tips from professional makers like me.